Hold it up. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I'll never, never, never doubt this Word because it is the Word of God. I've got ears to hear, heart to receive, so teach to me the Word of God. Say, I believe it. I receive it right now in Jesus' name. Say this with me. Love never fails. Come on, say it with faith. Love never fails. Isn't that a true statement? That's Bible, right? Paul told us that. Love never fails. Can't go wrong if you're in love. Doesn't make any difference what the situation is, but if you stay in love, if nobody else is in love but you're in love, you ain't going to fail because love (laughs) never fails. Isn't that great news? Don't you love it? Glory to God. Love never fails. We've been talking about the love of God the last few weeks, and tonight may finish up our three-part series. We may go on. We don't know. Depends on what the Holy Spirit says. But I know this, love never fails. Hallelujah. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I want you to know tonight three things. One, love is our motivation. Number two, love is our identification. And number three, love is our commandment. We are motivated by love. We are identified by love. And we are commanded to love. And I want you to know it's okay because love never fails. Love believes all things, bears all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We will look in verse 1. Praise the Lord. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge... And though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Now, the gifts of the Spirit are given to profit the church. Paul tells us that in the beginning of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. He says the gifts are given that everybody can profit. But he also says right here in chapter 13 that you can function in the gifts, but it not profit you if you're not functioning in love. Isn't that an interesting thing? You can function in the gifts You can function in the gifts of the Spirit, but if you're lacking love, which is the chief fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance, you can have the gifts of the Spirit, but if you're lacking the fruit of the Spirit, there's no profit in it for you. In other words, the gifts of the Spirit were not designed to operate independently of the fruit of the Spirit. And doesn't that make sense? The Holy Spirit brings the package deal. He wants you to operate in the gifts of the Spirit, which is the work of Christ. But He also wants you to function in the fruit of the Spirit, which is the character of Christ. So He wants you to function in the abilities of Christ because you're motivated by the love of Christ. Come on. (laughs) Love is the motive behind the gifts. Come on. You are going, if you are going to operate in the gifts of the Spirit, you should be operating in the fruit of the Spirit. The chief fruit of the Spirit is love. And Paul says, you can operate in the gifts. You can have the tongues of men and angels. You can have the gift of prophecy. Understand all mysteries and knowledge. You can have all faith that you can move mountains. You can give all you have to help the poor. You can even give your body as a sacrifice. But if you're not doing it in love, there's no profit to it. It doesn't add up. So when we stand before the Bema Seat of, of Christ... And we're given an account of our life. Remember, the Bema Seat is where we 
receive rewards of, of our life lived as believers, God is not just going to ask us the who, the what, the when, the where of our Christian life. He's going to ask us why. <laughs> what was your motive? Why did you do what you do? Because sometimes as believers, can we be honest tonight, sometimes as believers, not everything we do is motivated by love. Sometimes it's motivated by self-grandizement. It's motivated by self-interest. Can, can we be honest tonight? Sometimes it's not about God. Sometimes it's about good old me. <laughs> Sometimes it's not about his throne. I'm trying to build my own throne. Can we be honest tonight? And sometimes we want to look big in our gift. And sometimes we want to be impressive in our gift. And sometimes the glory doesn't get beyond us to get to the gift giver. <laughs> Hallelujah. But if you're flowing in love, he's going to get the glory. If you're flowing in love, he's going to get the honor. If you're flowing in love, it's not about you, it's about him. If you're flowing in love, people aren't going to be looking at you. They're going to be looking at him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 It's about him. Hallelujah. He should get all the glory and all the honor. Hallelujah. I mean, God wants you flowing in the gifts of the Spirit. He just wants you flowing in love. Faith works by love. You know, we should be flowing in love anyways. Flow in the gifts. Flow in the, in the fruit. Gifts and fruit. They go together. Praise the Lord. If you're going to do things in the nature, I mean, if you're going to do things in the name of the Lord, you should be doing it in the nature of the Lord. And God is love. 1 John 4 and 8, God is love. That's what the Bible says. If you're going to be doing things in His name, we should be doing it in His nature. God is love. We often do things in His name, but not in His nature. <laughs> this is kind of an hour. We, we sometimes do things in His name, but not the way Jesus would have done it if Jesus was doing it right then. And as believers, shouldn't we be doing it the way Jesus would do it? With the attitude of Christ, Christ-likeness, and, and not just to get the glory, not just to do the gift, but to honor the gift giver so that everybody knows where the power came from. Aren't, aren't we, is, you are supposed to have power, and you shall receive power, and the Holy Spirit comes upon you, but you shall be witnesses unto who? Jesus. Yeah, you're right, me. Jesus. Not me, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the world. We are witnesses unto Christ. Uh, we have the power of the Holy Spirit to be witnesses unto Christ. So everybody knows where we got the power from. So Jesus gets the glory. Everybody say, Jesus gets the glory. If I'm going to do it in his name, I'm going to do it in his nature. Isn't that right? It's like if a, if a fella opened a store, a fella opened a, a hardware store, Jim Bob's Hardware Store. And I, I'm going to open a hardware store. I'm going to call it Jim Bob's, Jimbo's Hardware Store, and uh, Jimbo's Hardware Store. And because it is my store, I want that store to be shiny. I want it to be gleaming. I want it to be awesome experience. I want everybody that comes in to feel warm and happy and, and find what they're looking for. I want it to make their life better. I want them to be glad that they came to Jimbo's hardware store. And I'm going to be there because what? I put everything into it. It's my dream. It's my vision. It's my passion. I put the mortgage of the house on it. Every cent I've saved, I put it into this store. Glory to God. Put the sign above, Jimbo's Hardware Store. And so when someone comes in, I meet them at the door. Oh, thank you for coming to Jimbo's Hardware Store. I'm so glad you came to Jimbo's. And what can I help you find? Well, I'm looking for a hammer. I've got hammers. Glory to God. Come on, come on, come on. Let me take you down to the hammer place. And I've got this 16-ounce hammer. It's a waffle head hammer. It's got a rubber handle to it, so it'll keep your palm all supple. And it is just the hammer that you need. This is the hammer for you. Hey, and it also needs to go into a belt around your waist. I've got those two. And do you have safety? 
safety glasses? I've got safety glasses. Glory to God. Uh, you know what? I've got everything that you need. i got the nails. i got the hammer. i got the hammer holder. i got everything. Glory to God. And I'm so happy and I'm so good at it that my business grows. And it grows. And people are flocking to Jimbo's hardware store because i got the best hammers in town. Glory to God. So what do I do? I hire somebody. Help me, help me to sell these hammers because people are coming to Jimbo's now. And so I go off and, and I, I entrust my store to this young man to sell my hammers and saws and vices and nails and everything else. But he doesn't have my vision. And he didn't pay the price that I paid. And he's just there for the hours. And someone comes in to buy the hammer. He bought one from me, and now he wants to buy another one. And he comes in, and Jimbo isn't there, but the young man is, is there. And the young man doesn't have my attitude, doesn't have my vision, couldn't care less, didn't pay anything to put that building up. He's there for the hours. And the man comes in, hey, I bought a hammer from Jimbo, and I'm here to buy another hammer, and, and where are your hammers at now? And the young man says, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm getting ready to go on my lunch hour. And you know what? I think they're back there somewhere. If you just go back there, you'll bump into them eventually. And by the way, what would you want a hammer for anyways? You know you're going to hit your thumb. It's going to be a painful experience. But okay, okay, I'll take you back there and I'll get your hammer. And the guy just gets disgusted and he walks out. And he bumps into Jimbo down the road. And he says, Jimbo, if you don't want to sell hammers, I can go down the road to get a different, to a different store to get my hammer. And Jimbo says, what are you talking? about. Of course I want to sell hammers. And the guy said, your representative wasn't very interested in selling me a hammer. You see, the guy that was working in Jimbo's, he had the vest. Jimbo's hardware store. And he had the hat. Jimbo's hardware store. But he did not have the heart. And he did not have the nature. And he had the name of but he didn't have the nature. And a lot of folks have the name Christian. Come on, church. <laughs> but we're lacking the love. <laughs> we're lacking the nature. And so we're doing a lot of things in the name, and people are getting turned off because they're not finding the nature. <laughs> I said we're doing things in the name but if you're not doing things in the nature of God, in the love of God, then you're not impressing anybody. And it's not profiting you at all. God says it doesn't make any difference. If you don't have love, it profits you nothing. Everybody say nothing. nothing. On the judgment day, no profit. On the judgment day, no profit. If it wasn't done in love, God is love. 1 John 4 and 8, God is love. John 3 and 16, for God so loved. Romans 5, 5, God's love is shed abroad in our heart. Galatians 5, 22, this produces the character of love, which is the fruit of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, love is fundamental to our spiritual gifts, how our spiritual gifts work. Y'all understand, we need to flow in love. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Love never fails. So we need to flow in love. Love is the motivation of the gifts. Isn't it interesting? In 1 Corinthians 12, the gifts are introduced. 1 Corinthians 13, the motivation of the gifts are defined, love. And then 1 Corinthians 14, we're told how the gifts operate in the house of God. So you get the gifts introduced, the motives to the gifts, the function of the gifts. Gifts introduced, motives of the gift. So the motives of the gifts are right between the introduction of the gifts and the operation of the gifts. But you got to have... I said you got to have the frosting between the Oreo halves, right? Or it doesn't taste as good. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Love is, in 1 Corinthians 13 and 4... Paul then tells us, love is very practical. He said, I'll tell you exactly what it is. I'll define it for you. 1 Corinthians 13 and 4. Love is patient. Love is kind. 
And now he's going to tell us what love is not. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up. But a lot of gifts flow in those parades, don't they? And that puffed up business. Verse 5, love does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil. Verse 6, love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. So we know that love is patient, love is kind, love rejoices in the truth. That's what Paul tells us right there. We also know that love is not jealous, love is not boastful, love is not proud, love is not rude, love is not selfish, love is not irritable, love is not judgmental, love does not rejoice in injustice or lies. So there's a lot more of what love is not than what love is. What love is is patient and kind, rejoices in the truth. Patient, kind, and truthful. That's what love is uh, in the atmosphere, in the realm of sacrificial living. That's what love is. Praise the Lord. And then he tells us the five attributes of love. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Love bears all things. That word bears all things, it it goes into the original language. It is the same. Bears all things is the same word as a roof. Love bears provides a shelter. It provides a covering so that the harsh elements of the environment cannot rain down on somebody. So love adds a protective layer to somebody's life so that they're not harmed from the, uh, uh, the harsh environment. Isn't that nice? Praise the Lord. And then love believes all things. Love believes the best. Love is always looking for the best. Love is not critical. Love does not seek to wound. Love believes the best, looks for the best, expects the best. Love believes all things. Glory to God. Love hopes all things. Love does not ever, ever, ever look look at failure as final. Love never quits. It never gives up. There there might be things in our lives, moments in our lives where it just didn't work out so great. But that is not the end of the story. And God never ends on a negative. If God ended on a negative, it would have been done in the Garden of Eden. But he went a long, 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 long way to get us out of the mire and the pit and into glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Love hopes all things. Love endures all things. The word endures is a military term that means to hold a position at all costs. In other words, if the general tells the sergeant, I want you to hold that bridge, no matter what, you hold that bridge because we got to get the tanks across the bridge. We got to get the army across the bridge. They're going to want to blow up the bridge, but you hold that bridge. And I don't care if it's you by yourself, you make a stand and you hold that bridge. (laughs) That's what love endures all things. It means I'm going to hold my position, I'm going to stay in love no matter what no matter what, no matter what it looks like, no no matter what the enemy is throwing at me, I am going to stay in love. I'm going to hold my position. And then love never fails. It never falls away. It's never without effect. It never ceases to exist. Love is the one thing you're going to take with you into glory. (laughs) Don't you know heaven is filled with an atmosphere of love because God is love. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Let me bring it to a close by saying love is the motivation of why we operate in the gifts, but love is also the identifier of us as Christians. We know that love and the gifts of the Spirit work by faith. We know what love is. It's patient, it's kind, it rejoices in the truth. We know what it is, and it isn't jealous, it isn't boastful. But others know Christians uh, by the love we operate in. We should stand out. We should be different. We should react to things differently so that people should say something different about that guy. Why does that guy's feathers get ruffled? Why doesn't that guy, why is he just so happy all the time? Why is he flowing in patience? Why is there a rejoicing on the inside? Why does he seem to be above the fray? 
Why is he walking in victory all the time? People should notice that about us. Look at this. By this, John 13 and 35. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Hallelujah. That's how people know we're disciples of Jesus if we have love for one another. Verse John 3 and 10. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. For this is the message that you've heard from the beginning, that you should love one another. You should love one another. Say, I love everybody. Yeah. That's the new commandment. This is the new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Love is our motivation. Love is our identification. And love is the commandment that Jesus gave the church. Did you get anything out of this tonight? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.